before we get into that, I want to ask, since this is a question that has been on people's minds, it seems, lately, who is the GOAT? Who is the greatest of all time? <laughs> okay. So if we're talking if we're talking about stand up comedians, comics, who's on your list? Alright, do you just <clears> want <throat> my number one or do you want my top five? Well either way. Share what you want to share. Alright, but I've decided to take liberties and include just general comedians. Sure. Okay, like so like sketch sketch comedians? Yeah, or? I mean you'll see. There's only one okay. that really stands out or one and possibly two who stand out for more of their their television influence. But uh, okay, so I've got in number in first place I've got Larry David. Uh, okay. Yeah, just because of how much I adore Curb. Um, mm-hmm. But also, like obviously, leading into Seinfeld as well. And then I've got and these let's say no particular order besides maybe the Larry David. Uh, right. So then I've got Dave Chappelle. Um, who doesn't necessarily always make me laugh out loud, and I would say that his past few specials haven't like blown me away. Not because they've offended, but I just feel like they're a bit heavy-handed to some extent. I w- exactly. That's what I was going to say. That's why, I mean, he is definitely one of the greatest for me personally, but he's he's not the greatest because I think he's become a bit too preachy for my taste. Now I'm going to watch every single thing he does. Like that's I always, exactly it. Exactly. Yeah. It. I want to hear what he has to say because it's going to be interesting and he's going to have a unique take and it's going to be, there will be some hilarious moments as well, but uh, there, there's almost like a motivational speaker vibe that he's been giving off recently, which for I don't me, know about motivation. Somewhat, I would say more like spoken word, but fair enough. Yeah, it's just I mean at times it's off-putting to me, but I I want to I will definitely watch everything he does. Same with Bill Burr, you know, like I'm I'm eager to hear what they have to say. I think they're important voices. I want to listen to them. I mean, but I think keep the going. Fla- no, I just think maybe the flavor of comedy, or at least in certain threads of comedy it's like now we're almost interested yeah just in what this person's going to opine about something so it's like dave Chappelle is just now like a cultural figure he's a commentator as much as he is a comedian right and it's like yeah so maybe that's the whole new genre we need to t- consider in a different way but anyway okay next up i've got george carlin uh yeah just because of the the feeling that you're you're in the audience of a uh, master, I mean, you, the the amount of skill, the amount of effort, and I know we're gonna get much deeper into Carlin, but yeah, just that would say the thing that stands out is like his expertise uh, and just how how crafted his work is. Yeah, he's so, a craftsman. Yeah. Then I've got Ricky Gervais, who actually I'm not a huge, huge fan of to be honest, but because he made The Office, which I think is like the greatest thing ever created, ever in comedy. Uh, for me, he just gets that place because of the office. I thought you. I thought you were going to include him. Yeah. What do you think about his Oscar? Uh, his hosting. hosting. I like it yeah. as well. Yeah. Not not. It's not always Oscar, is it? It's Golden Globes or right. some shit. I like it. Like anytime he hosts an award show. Actually, that's how I got into him. Like I never got into the Office, despite your recommendations. Did you try? I've seen some episodes, I just, uh, I don't know, maybe I should give it another chance, but when I saw him uh, destroying at those award shows, I became a fan. Like, I mean, it's so good. Yeah, I agree. It's so good. But anyway, continue. (laughs) And my last one, who I've been binging on now, and I think you might be able to guess just from that, uh, but it's Norm MacDonald. uh, Yeah. 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 I wouldn't have said that a few years ago, but since he died, I got fed a bunch of his videos on my algorithm, and then, I don't know why, but they've been popping up again, and I just go on super long deep dives, and it's kind of like this incredulous sensation, because I, yeah, he's pushing the boundaries so much, and I can't decide if sometimes if I'm slightly offended, but that's like, that's the fascination that draws me in, in a way. Well, that's the, that's what the great comedians do they they force us to confront 
these unpleasant issues and they find the humor in them. Maybe, but <clears throat> I would just say that, I mean, we can talk about Norm. I don't know if you want to talk about it now as well, but I'd say it's a different, I wouldn't say it's like a, a necessary requirement of a great comedian. I would just say that's like, that's his brand, you know? Like, uh, yes, I, I mean, I agree. It's not like, Jerry Seinfeld. Right, exactly. That's exactly makes who us came think, to mind. Right. Right. Yeah. Or I don't know. Uh what what's the younger version of Seinfeld? Mark Normand or know. whatever. I mean I, I watch them too, of course. They're they're entertaining, but they don't uh they don't push the same buttons that these others do. Yeah, I mean I'm just and, thinking about the way that like Norm McDonald like deals with race, with gender. I mean he does he says stuff that I question, like whether I should really laugh. Yeah, there's some. Right? He seems he seems to be promoting some odious views at times, but you don't know is it is he just putting you on or exactly is he doing which it? is right? Yeah, which is you know this is a great thing. I like I like uh, this uh, confrontation or or provocation i guess he's provoking the audience and he's he's almost daring the audience to laugh it's like right let's or like see. the holocaust is, humor right it's the same thing yeah is it am i am i joking or not right. actually this is a a theme i'm going to plug my latest project but my new book okay is called earnest games and so it's uh that's coming out soon but one of the themes is you know is it is it a game or is it serious? Uh, am I in earnest or am I just joking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's I think the the great comedians uh, operate in this realm, and you know sometimes they cross the line. They find the line. Actually, we were looking earlier at a Carlin quote. Uh, or a Carlin interview on the Chris Rock show. And he was talking about, he likes to find the line and then mm -hmm. go over the line and take the audience yeah. with him. It was interesting the way which, he said that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great thing. And then I'm just going to share some of my Please. top, I don't know, five or six. Please. I, I, for me, I think Carlin is, is number one if we have to rank, but you know, Richard Pryor is in the mix. Uh, for me, Chris Rock is Chris Rock because, gets an honorable mention for me because from you know I he was coming up when I was a teenager. He's probably only a few years older than me, and I remember seeing some of his first sets, and I thought this guy is hilarious. Oh yeah, if we're talking about early Chris Rock, that's what I that's like the fundamental stand up comedy that I grew up on. It's just that like, I feel like he's he's fallen off a little bit. Well, uh, he did a special called Tambourine recently, which I quite enjoyed. I thought it was uh, very entertaining. And Yeah, but and, does it have the same level of just like vigor and ruthlessness that his earlier stuff did? Like Bigger and, like black, bigger and Blacker, was it? One of them? Yeah, and what, Bring the Pain and Kill the Messenger and whatnot. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe not, but it's, you know, he's... He's in a different place now. Well, that's he got the thing. Divorced. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah, he's a single dad, and uh, I don't know. I I still very much want to hear what he has to say. Uh, okay, and uh, Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks is one of the greats for me. I can't say too much about him, but I know he's hugely respected. Yeah, uh, and even though he was not that prolific, Patrice O'Neill. I'm glad you mentioned him because I was talking to my buddy Joe, you know, the guy I'm constantly referring to, mm -hmm. uh, and he did his top five, and then he got super frustrated with himself. He's like, oh my god, I forgot Patrice O'Neill, and I don't even know that guy either, but obviously if both of you guys have mentioned him. Well, uh, check out his special, Elephant in the Room. I mean, it is brilliant. I mean, I've... I don't know how many times I've watched it. Like I probably watch it a couple times a year and I am like in physical pain afterwards <laughs> because I'm laughing so hard. And yeah. he, and you know, he, he goes to uncomfortable places 
as well in such a masterful, brilliant way. And speaking of that kind of comedian, I have to mention Louis C.K. Louis C.K. is on my honorable mentions. Yeah, whom everyone now loves to hate. But uh, his, you know, one of his recent specials, Sincerely, I listened to that again uh, last week, I think. And it's great. It's great. And he's still retained a a significant fan base, too, you know. I mean, he... He's definitely he's definitely still pretty massive. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, he he doesn't give a fuck. He will he will confront anything. And and the way he plays with the audience and and uh, his self deprecation. Yeah, I gotta, think, gotta talk about self deprecation with him for sure. Yeah, I mean, I love it. Yeah, I do too. I do too. To hear more of this and other episodes of texting. Go to markwillwright.substack.com.